live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. The Greens will enter the state's new parliament with renewed confidence, having secured their highest ever level of representation. Former leader, now Upper House member Cassie O'Connor, says the party is ready to take on the new look Liberal government and they won't be cowed by the big issues. Building momentum. The first Greens member is cracking into the Legislative Council. Never before have there been six Greens elected to Tasmania's parliament. After resigning her leadership position and her secure seat in the lower house, Cassie O'Connor took a risk that has paid off for her and her party. I look forward uh, to getting in there and learning about how it works and making sure uh, that Greens uh, values and policies are on the table for debate as they need to be. The Greens head into Parliament with newfound confidence, making it clear they aren't backing away from their positions on controversial topics. We know it's the wrong priority to build a stadium. We will be taking that into the Parliament with us. After Labor announced its newfound love for the stadium, there is growing scepticism about its change of heart. The government saying Stadium 2.0 proponent Paul Lennon, an ex-Labor Premier and a friend of opposition leader Dean Winter, influenced the decision. He's got serious questions to answer. Uh, when did he make this decision? Has he spoken with Mr Lennon as part of this process? Labor says sniping from the sidelines isn't helpful. Yesterday uh, Jeremy Rockliffe welcomed our support and today his attack dogs Felix Ellis and Simon Varakis are out uh, trying to attack about it. But remaining coy on Labor's preferred option. Some prefer one, some prefer another. We're saying that we support our stadium and we're willing to work with the government on that. The debate will resume when Parliament returns next week with with its mix of fresh and familiar faces. Lily Thompson, 7 Tasmania News. Lawyers for Hobart murderer Darren Mark Wake have pleaded with the court to deliver a minimum sentence, saying the accused remains remorseful and full of regret. Wake is facing lengthy jail time after he pleaded guilty to killing 52-year-old mother of two, Rachel Wake, on Christmas Day in 2021. The victim's daughter and mother were present when Wake's lawyers told the Supreme Court he deserves as short a non-parole period as possible. Wake has been remanded in custody and is due to reappear in court on June 19. A planned greyhound and harness racing track in the northwest is being scratched as the initial $18 million cost blows out beyond $38 million. Promised as a replacement to the Devonport showground, which closed two years ago, the cancellation of the Wesleyvale track is being labelled a hit to the industry. They've been travelling to Launceston and travelling to Hobart. Uh, they've had substandard training and, and, and facilities on the northwest coast. Uh, they've been holding on, they've been supporting the industry. Their future is looking really grim at the moment. Tas Racing says it's starting work immediately on a new proposal. An independent Tasmanian senator is pushing for a local supermarket shake-up. In the wake of the Senate inquiry report, Tammy Tyrrell is calling on all levels of government to work together to slash red tape and make it easier for newcomers to set up shop. It was very clear within the inquiry that to reduce prices for consumers, you need to have competition. And here in Tasmania, we've got no competition. The Launceston-based senator who sat on the inquiry is also pushing for recommendations on a price gouging crackdown to be swiftly implemented. Shocking dash cam footage has captured the moment a vehicle was hit at high speed while parked, providing roadside assistance. RACT releasing the confronting vision to expose the dangers our frontline workers face on the roads each day. The heart-stopping moment a car smashes into a roadside assistance van. Bright yellow flashing lights not enough to prevent this frightening nighttime collision. Despite all these precautions, uh, you can see the results. Uh, fortunately, no one was seriously hurt, but that could so easily have been a different outcome. The RACT sharing the vision as part of Road Safety Week, serving as a stark reminder to drivers to slow down to protect those who protect and assist us. They do their very best to protect themselves, our members and the general public, but we ask all Tasmanians to think about making sure they slow down when they see the flashing lights. Frontline workers taking a stand, driving home the message to reduce speeds when approaching emergency vehicles. 
people are not heeding the warnings to slow down. It doesn't take much and it could make a big impact in terms of saving someone's life. The warning comes as police crack down on poor driver behaviour, launching a statewide operation to stamp out those breaking the rules. Through all our geographical areas are making a day of action to focus on enforcing the road rules and continuing to keep the community safe. As the state government pushes towards new legislation, putting drivers doing the wrong thing on notice. It'll be about cracking down on hooning, dangerous driving and bringing in a new offence of road rage. Because a momentary lapse of judgement could spell disaster. Victoria Risto, 7 Tasmania News. Child abuse victim survivors and advocates have held tough but important conversations to address rates of family violence in the state. The Courageous Conversations Conference in Hobart, hosted by the Sexual Assault Support Service and Laurel House, bringing experts from around the country together for a common goal. Coming together and you know, holding everyone to account as to the role that they need to play to prevent and respond to child sexual abuse. That people who have lived experience are the experts of their own lives and probably come with the most understanding of what the impacts of child sexual abuse are. Plans are now underway to take the event to other parts of the state. While Tasmania's workforce continues to struggle to attract employees, a leadership program has been launched to encourage and groom potential talent. More than 30 individuals are participating in the first of its kind course designed to not only upskill but also keep leaders in Tasmania. Stepping up, more than 30 promising future leaders being prepped to take the reins in their respective fields. Oliver Oxley is among them. I believe it's just the next step in my leadership journey, learning more about myself, about the people I manage and how I can be a better leader for them as well. The 31-year-old is the venue manager at Duquesne Brewing in Launceston. He hopes the program will hone his leadership skills. I really enjoy fostering a good environment for people to feel like they can enjoy hospitality again because I feel like sort of got a bad rap last maybe decade. The two-month intensive course is a first of its kind, demonstrating that the best way to lead others is through self-development. Tasmanian Leaders CEO Angela Driver says the private sector and not-for-profits are constantly on the hunt for talent. I think there's an incredible flux globally around people staying in jobs for shorter periods of time. So we've got this you know, unique opportunity to grab people where they're at and really fast track them up to where we need to be. Federal Group is partnering with Tasmanian leaders to deliver the program, which comes amid a massive skills shortage affecting industries across the country. Latest national job ads data showing an 18% drop last month. There are hopes that by encouraging and supporting future leaders, more workers will ultimately choose to stay in Tasmania. We want to encourage um, and build capability in our leaders to create those really fun and engaging and safe workplaces for people to thrive. Melinda Ogden, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmanians from all walks of life shared a hearty bite this morning to mark plate with a mate. The initiative aims to highlight the benefits of having a meal with friends while also promoting healthy eating. Dishing up for a good cause. Tasmania's top chefs and community leaders cooking up a storm to celebrate Plate for a Mate Day. It's, it's a great uh, cause to do uh, Plate for a Mate. Um, engages in conversation. Um, helps us all with our personal well-being as well. The joint initiative hosted by Evo Tasmania and Blue Line Laundry aimed at fostering social connections over a healthy bite to eat, while also a chance for vulnerable Tasmanians to connect, check in with each other and learn a new skill from some of the best in the business. It's all part of our social inclusion where we can share a greater sense of purpose with each other. The initiative has the backing of the Governor herself. It's good for mental health, it's good for healthy eating and it's it's a wonderful event. Her Excellency also flexing her green thumb at today's event, providing some of the fresh produce from her community garden. And we've got a very large vegetable garden which we use to provide to various charities and organisations. Hoping Tasmanians eat their way to a happy and healthy heart with friends this month. Rebecca Gade Neris, 7 Tasmania News.
Having just arrived from Europe on Friday afternoon, jet lag didn't seem to be an issue for Belgian import Laurie Davo running out for the tornadoes the following night. With the squad now complete, they can feel good things brewing between Davo, Trinity Oliver and Keely Frolling, taking a chance to gel after that rushed introduction. Learning how to play the plays on the court and like what we were going to do in defense and stuff. So it was a lot of information in a short time right before the game. Having each other's back and, and learning how each other plays, I think that that's just going to grow as practice uh, continues and games keep going. So um, yeah, just time. That's all we need is a little bit more time. The Chargers women's coach says the team's getting frustrated at times as they struggle to pick up momentum. The men's coach, on the other hand, is feeling blessed to have the Jack Jumpers captain helping guide his troops. Clint Steindl's been around a long time. You're not going to teach him anything. It's more what he can educate the team and even the coaches and what, what's working, what's not working. It's just great to have someone with that experience that I can fall on to. The Chargers, Torns and Thunder all play Melbourne Tigers this weekend. North Esk and Lindisfarne Rowing Clubs are second and third in the medal tally after day one of the Australian Masters Rowing Championships at Lake Barrington. 800 competitors from around the nation and across the ditch are competing there until Saturday. Melbourne's currently leading with five goals. It's 100 days until supercars return to Simmons Plains for the Tasmanian Super Sprint from August 16. This year's Tassie trip comes a bit later than usual, the winter conditions posing some fresh challenges for drivers and their teams. Qualifying will be interesting how we get the tyre temperature up and the races as well because there are no tyre warmers in supercars. So normally it's hard getting the tyres up when you pit but I think this is going to add another complexion because it is going to be so cold. It'll be an important leg on the Supercars Tour leading into the endurance races at Sandown and Bathurst. It's an exciting day for Tassie Devil and former old Scotch player Janisha Kickoak. After missing out on last year's AFLW draft, the 18-year-old's been handed a contract with the Dockers. She'll move to Perth in time for the pre-season in June. A big chance awaits Bernie's Taryn Armstrong, the Cairns Taipan and Australian boomer, one of 45 basketballers invited to attend the NBA G League elite camp this weekend in Chicago. The two-day camp is a great pathway to the NBA, with scouts and coaches watching drills and five-on-five -five games. A select number of players are then invited to a draft combine next week. And they say every sports highlight sounds better in Spanish. Jack Jumper, Milton Doyle dropping the game winner for Maez Indians in Puerto Rico. Also drawing the foul to seal the 78-76 win against Arecibo. I have no idea what he was saying, Kim, but I think he likes Milton Doyle as much as we do. <laughs> I think you're right, the JJs need to take it up. Good evening, Hobart, a cool one today with just 13 degrees. Launceston recorded 18, Devonport our high, 19 today and Burnie 17. Cooler temperatures over the east and south. Flinders Island, however, and Lowhead 18, King Islands and Helens and Strawn 17, Friendly Beaches 15, Grove and Bushy Park 14 degrees. Lyaweenie pipped by Lake St Clair and Fingal's 1 degree for the low overnight. Some low cloud covered most of the south and east today. A few showers around Hobart. The mountain copped around 12 millimetres and Mount Seymour 8 millimetres. The east coast of the mainland can't seem to shake the cloud there. High cloud over inland parts of eastern Australia as well. Tomorrow we have a high to the southeast and another to the southwest. A trough lies over inland Queensland. Fairly stable weather over the waters with uh, winds below the 20 knot mark over the north and lighter more variable winds over southern waters. Hobart tomorrow 17 and partly cloudy. Signet 18, New Norfolk partly cloudy, 19 the top. Launceston a high of 20 and partly cloudy, 19 for Devonport, Campbelltown, 6 overnight, 17 the top tomorrow. 18 for Burnie, 18 for Strawn, a sunny day in the west, Smithton a cloudy 1 and 19 degrees. And for St Helens a few showers, 18, Swansea 17 degrees, Fingal a shower too, 17 the top. On Friday a few more showers over Bass Strait and the east coast, partly cloudy weather on Saturday, another shower for St Helens, a slight improvement in conditions on Sunday, possible shower over Burnie. Partly cloudy and 27 in Perth, a sunny 23 for Adelaide, cloudy and 19 in Melbourne, showers all the way up the east coast but sunny weather for Darwin. Bit of cloud over Hobart, 11 degrees at the moment, mostly cloudy in Launceston, 13 currently and similar for Devonport and Kim, an injury update despite a minor calf strain, I was able to get through the weather tonight. 
<laughs> I'm very proud of you. <laughs> that is all we have time for tonight. We'll have news, sport and weather updates throughout the evening. But for now, it is good night.